Okay, everybody has their book and their pens? Yeah. All right, so today is September what? 16th, 16th 2015, right? 2015. Okay, good. Let's get uh, Angel. How do you spell your name, Tishi? T A H S I N. S A? T A H S I N. Okay. Kelvin. Huh? <laughs> and Terrence. Terrence. Terrence with a K. Terrence with a K. Okay, good. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> okay. So this is our third week. And today we're going to focus on Google Calendar, Google Calendar app. So what did we do the first week? Do you remember what we were talking about? The first week. You were here the second week. You weren't here the first week. Okay, Angel, what were we talking about the first week? What would I do? Okay. Terrence, why do we write stuff down in our books? To copy it. Why do we write stuff down in our books? To remember it. To remember. What? Yeah, to copy it. Well. Copy. Like you three copies. Okay. So, so we write down so we remember. We remember because we make copies. We copies, yeah. Okay? So like to Tashin didn't remember anything from two weeks ago, right? You, know, you didn't remember what we did. And now that I say we did employment planning, you sort of remember? Okay, so and you sort of remember employment planning, <clears throat> what you have to do to get a job, and you think of what would I do if I could do anything? So it's important to write this stuff down. And it's also important to do what, Kelvin? Once you write it down, then what? Okay. Then what? Uh, uh, go back to it. Yeah. Review. Yeah. Okay. It's important to review because if you don't write it down, you're not going to remember. Well, you're not going to remember anyway. You're going to forget 70% of what we do here anyway if you don't review it tomorrow. And okay. if you don't write it, hold on. One, if you don't write it down, what do you have to review? Nothing, because you don't remember. So it's important. This is an important habit to get into. So yes, Kelvin. That's actually a fact. We get seven, percent of Yeah, for the average person. But you yeah. said like fifty, right? 50. Huh? You said you said we forget like fifty. No, I said seventy. The average person forgets seventy percent of what they what they learn today. They'll forget within twenty four hours. Okay, because our brains are designed to gather a lot of information, but not to retain most of what we learn. Oh, never mind. I was thinking about the okay. So, you know, as you're walking during the day, as you're eating food, your brain is processing that, you're remembering it, but you don't need to keep it out of anything other than short-term memory, right? Like, let's say you're having a bowl of cereal. You remember you're having a bowl of cereal while you're eating, right? You don't forget one second later, hey, what, what's the spoon in my hand? How did I get here? You don't do that, okay? It's stored in short-term memory. But do you really need to remember tomorrow that whole experience of eating cereal? Second by second by second? No. Our brain doesn't know what it needs to know, what it needs to remember automatically. It doesn't automatically remember, oh, this is important. We have to say it's important. And we have to do things so that we try to remember. So we have to move it from short-term memory, or what's called working memory, into longer-term memory. But if you don't write it down, how do you move something into long-term memory? You can't. You can't, it's because you don't have anything. Right. Now, we try to make it easy for you two ways. What's one way? Writing it down. Writing it down. What's the other way? Reading it also. Oh, recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make sure to get your Gmail addresses today. <clears throat> and what I'm doing now with you guys 
is sending notifications every day of Hangouts on Air yeah. that we have at the other school, and then a notification that we're going to be doing this. So we'll have a library, so you guys can go back to week number one and find it. So let's go in our books, on our table of contents. We'll go to the first blank page and write HOA. Okay. No, the table of the contents. Go to your table of contents. Page. No, no. What I'm saying is, go to your first blank page after you have writing. So it might be page 10 or 11. Okay. You have notes in there, right? Yes. Okay, what is the first blank page you have? It will be 9. Okay, and what about you, Kelvin? 3. three. Huh? Three pages, right? Huh? After a table of context, you skip three pages? Yeah, but what's your first blank page after you took notes? Okay, now, Tashin, do you remember how to do that? So, no, that's not how to do it. So go to skip a couple pages. Skip a couple pages, then write contents. Skip a couple more pages. And then the lower right corner, put one, the number one, flip to the next page, put three. No, no. Lower right only. Good. You go five. Okay. And so you've got an angel, all right? So, and Kelvin, do you have that? What? What we're talking about. You have your number in your pages? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, go to the first blank page you have. So for Tashin, it's going to be page one. What is it for you? Eleven. Eleven. Good. So you've got a lot of notes. Okay. So you go to page, whatever that page is down here, you write HOA. That's the first thing. The second thing now is go to your contents page, and the first blank line, you write what? HOA. You write HOA. First on the left, there's that red line. Yes. Okay, you put the date, 9, 16, 15, 12. You put HOA, so you on the on this side. Good, perfect. Okay, so you're only writing on the right side, remember. So at the top, good, excellent. So on the left side of the red line, put the gate, HOA, and then the page number. Okay? So now your table of contents is that way. Yeah. So if you ever want to go back to your HOA page, what do you do? You look at your contents page. Right. Okay. Now, on your HOA page, so go to your HOA page, and then put week one. And then go to the next line, week two. Week three, and over here this is nine sixteen. So this is nine nine, and then nine two. Yeah, so here's the red line, date, week one, so 9-2 was week one, that was employment planning. You guys weren't here. That's what I missed? Yeah. 9-9, nine, nine, week two was GMAT, right? Okay, so Tashin and Angel missed that. Week three 
was calendar. calendar. Yes. Well, not was, is, will be, is calendar. All right? So now for your notes, Angel, for week one, what is the page number in your book that you did page one? You, it was on page one, right? Week one was on page one, right? Mm -hmm. Was that your notes about when the employment planning started, or what did we have? No, I started on page five. Okay, and was that employment planning? I think so. Okay, so you then put page five, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like a subcontent of your table of contents. Yeah, oh, actually, what is H O A S? Okay, this is a Google Hangout on air. Okay. So if you go to Google Plus, there's a thing that says Hangouts. I'll show you that later. Okay, so for you, Angel, this says page five. Okay, Tashin, you were here, but it's in your other book that you forgot. You guys weren't here. For week one. Okay. You guys were not here. Trust me when I say you weren't here. Now, you guys are here for week two. What is the page in your book that your Gmail notes start? Page one? Five. Page five. Okay, because we were talking about other things, right? Okay. Good. So that says page five in your book. You guys don't have Gmail. So your table of contents is going to be, oh, well, they did Gmail on week two. I didn't do Gmail. I wasn't here. When we come back to this eight weeks from now, you guys would go to page five to add to your Gmail notes. Yeah. Instead of starting over, you'll add to them because when you look at it, you'll remember some of them, right? Now, calendar, now we need to go to another page. So what's the next blank page in your book? Body image? No, the next oh. blank page. 11. Oh, 11. Okay. So you guys, next to calendar, write 11. Okay. And what are you going to write, Tishine? Three. Three. And what about you, Angel? Twelve. Twelve. Good. Okay. So... What is what have what have we done so far? How is our book organized so far? You have a contents page, right? And you have stuff, 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 and then you have HOA, right? And it has a page number. This takes you to a page that says HOA, right? And you have stuff, stuff. Calendar and it has a page here, and that now is going to take you to a page that's titled Calendar. Maybe yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now you have a page that says Calendar. Why don't we just organize it so on your table of contents it says Calendar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we want to make it easy to find things. We don't want to have to flip through three pages of your contents. Okay. Yeah. Because if this book gets filled up with notes, you could have three pages of table of contents stuff, and it's not going to be easy to go there. But if you have one page and one of the categories is HOA, boom, boom, you get there in 18 seconds. Right. That's all it takes you to get there. So, um, okay, that should be good. Okay, so why am I going over this again? To review. Well, why am I reviewing it? So we can Re remember. remember, right? Okay, it doesn't take as long each week. The first week we were doing it took an hour to get through the book part. And it took almost an hour last week because we only had one person who was in here from week one last week, Shadi. Now today, everybody's been here week one, and you kind of remember this, but we're now going and learning more, right? Because we didn't get into this level in week one. 
next week, what are we, how are we going to start? What am I going to say? Uh, can we review? Okay, you got your book. Oh. Then what? What am I going to say next? Well, we're going to add something more to our table of contents. And yeah, so you're going to go to your Hangout on Air page, okay. right? You're going to add whatever the next week's next thing is. Yeah. Okay? And then you don't need to go back to this page, right? Why not? Because we're on the uh, HO. Yeah, because you already have the HO in the page here. Right. Okay? So now when you're on this page and you write whatever it is, what's the page number going to be? For me, 13. Well, maybe not, because you might have a couple oh, more pages. Oh, yeah. well, It'll be your right. first blank page. And then that page, instead of saying calendar, will say something else. It might say drive. I don't know what it's going to say, but it might say drive. OK, so here's the thing about being a good employee. So this should have, there should be a, a book in here about good habits or good employee habits. If you don't have it, go to your next new page, your next blank page. Right, good habits. Uh, next new page. Next blank page. Write good habits. Now go to your contents page and write what? Good habits. Exactly. Right. Good habits. Are you tracking with this angel? Mm -hmm. And what do you put next to good habits? Page. The page number, page three, page, yeah. whatever your page number is. Right. Okay. So again, at the school where I teach at Larson Training Centers, it's about employment, and employment is about marketable skills. And getting employment, having marketable skills, enables you to have stable and meaningful employment, not just a job, but you have something that's more than a job, right? Yeah. So. Part of having a part of marketable skills are knowing how to do the job. The other part of marketable skills is having uh, doing things that don't have to do with the job. What I'm calling good habits. Okay. So a good employee is not somebody who can do the job that nobody likes being around. Who is Steve Jobs? He was the founder of that. Yeah, exactly. So one of my good friends is a guy named Nolan Bushnell. Nolan Bushnell started a company called Atari. Anybody ever hear of Atari? Yeah. Okay. So they, he invented the first successful video game, coin-op video game called what? What was the first game? It was called Pong. Oh, was it the, the, the yeah. That was the first game ever? Not the first yeah, game ever, the first successful game. Yeah. There were games that were lousy. But this was the first one. Okay. So he started a company called Atari. The they had Pong, uh, Asteroids, a whole bunch of games. Caterpillar, Centipede. Did this go in the good habits section? Not yet. Oh. I'm going to give an example of good habits. So one of the guys that worked at Atari early on for a little while, his name was Steve Jobs. And Nolan talks about Steve Jobs. You can see a, a, one of our YouTube, Larson YouTube videos with Nolan Bushnell in it. And Steve Jobs worked there. But the problem with Steve Jobs is he wasn't a good employee. Not because he wasn't smart. Not because he didn't know what to do. No. Apple. Yeah. So one of the things he didn't do was bathe. People didn't like being around him because he smelled, because he didn't like to bathe. He didn't like to wear shoes in there. And he used to tell people they were stupid. Would that be a good employee? No. No, those are called bad habits. Yeah. So Nolan tells the story of a lot of people at Atari 
that were in the same level as Steve, programmers, would complain to the boss. Nolan was the president. They complained to the supervisor. This guy, we need to fire him. He smells. I can't stand being around him. And he's, he thinks he's better than everyone else. He's always telling us we're stupid. We're idiots. We don't know what we're doing. Okay? He has bad language. So the supervisor goes to Nolan. And this is the, this part is in the the, t, uh, the movie Jobs. Yeah, yeah, because I know okay. they made the movie. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one before. This is when uh, Kushner, Ashton yeah, Ash Kushner. Kushner. Yeah. So this is the movie. Yeah. This, this is in what I'm describing to you is in that movie. So they go. To, so the employees went to the boss and said, "Hey, we, you know, we got to fire this guy. We've all all of us employees have agreed. You've got to fire Jobs, who is just another young kid." And the supervisor goes to Nolan and says, you know, people are complaining about Steve. Nolan said, well, Steve is a talented guy. We need to figure out a way to work with him, get him to fit into the program, because he really is talented. So what was the solution they came up with? Remember from the movie? Okay. They said, Steve, we're going to let you work here at night alone. <laughs> okay. and, but he wasn't a good employee. For our purposes, we have to learn to be good employees. These skills that we do, the apps, Gmail, Calendar, those are called hard skills as opposed to soft. Not hard because they're not easy. It's hard versus soft skills. Right. Okay. You said you were good friends with the Atari guy? Yeah, Nolan Bushnell. Wow. Yeah. And so have you ever met Steve Jobs? No. Oh, we never met Steve Jobs. Even though I was in, I'm from the Bay Area, so I was Are you? Yeah. So anyway, um, our thing is to have good habits. Steve Jobs had bad habits, but his talent oh, was yeah. so good overshadowed all that, right? But he couldn't work with anybody. And he says that in the movie. Okay, so good habit number one. One. And now you write this in the book under the page called Good Habit. Be prepared. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean you should not do? Well, it's not um, what should you not do in order to be prepared? Yeah, you don't wait till class starts, <laughs> or you're at work, and you say, "Can I go to the bathroom?" You do that before. Okay, fair enough. Okay, now it's okay to make a mistake the first time, but it's not good to make the same mistake again, because then your boss starts seeing you as what? Not good employee. Yeah. Okay. So another thing about being prepared. We talked about this last week and the week before. Is to communicate. What are the two ways to communicate? I'll give you a hint. The smaller one is verbal. Okay. Well, what's the second one? Non-body language. Body language, non-verbal. Non-verbal. And so, Angel, do you remember what we talked about two weeks ago about? What you need to do non-verbally so that your boss is when he's communicating with you that he gets that you get it. Okay, what do you do? What are you supposed to do? What are the non-verbal things that you do? If the boss is talking, what do you do? Well, of course you want to listen, but you need me to know that you're listening, right? What if I'm talking and you're looking out the window? You could be listening, right? You don't have to look at me. It's not like our ears only work at what we're looking at, right? We can still hear other stuff, right? I'm looking at you, but if somebody called my name from out there, would I hear it? Yeah. So our ears are not connected to our eyes. So you could be looking out the window or looking around, but you could be listening, right? What am I going to interpret that, though? You can. Well, you did not. If you're looking out the window and I'm talking, 
What is that going to say to me? Yeah, you're not Yeah, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're thinking about something else. So you need to communicate non-verbal. Most communication, we said, is non-verbal. It's your body language. Okay. So we need to work about body language. A, we need to look at other people's body language, which we mainly do. But we need to become aware that what's really important is our body language. What are we saying to the person, to our boss, or to the instructor, like me right now? What are we saying to me? And even if you have something else going on in your life that's not good, to be a good employee, you need to focus or let your supervisor believe you're focused on what he's saying. So if you, even if you're not listening, you should be looking and doing this because can what's, go, what's going on in my brain be independent of me doing this? Okay. So if I'm doing this, what am I thinking about? Well, no, you don't know what I'm thinking about, right? Well, yeah, well, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't know what you're thinking, but... Okay, you don't know what's going on in my brain, but you might think, if you're talking to me, I'm doing this, I'm tracking with what you're saying, okay? Would that be better to do, or would it be better if you're talking to me, and I'm thinking about my girlfriend? <laughs> would this be better? Would that be better? No, that, but that could be what I'm thinking, right? Okay, so a good habit is to focus on nonverbal communication, what you're saying, and also communicate. So you might notice that I ask questions a lot, right? Okay, why do I do that? Make sure that we're all... Okay. One main reason is to make sure you're paying attention because we also have a very short span of attention. Our brains are so busy doing so many things non-consciously that if we don't focus, we're going to be thinking about our girlfriend. Okay? But if we're thinking about our girlfriend, what are we not thinking about? What's important right now? What's important now? That might be more important. But what's important right now? Because we can't control that from here, right? You can run out of here and get in your car and drive over there. But when you're in here, you can't control what's going on out there. So part of the reason I ask questions is so that you keep focused on what's going on. Because if you don't focus on what's going on, what are you not going to be able to do? Okay, but what, so what's not going to happen? You're not going to learn. Okay, and if you don't learn it, there's nothing to remember, right? Yeah. You miss it. The, you miss the whole thing. So that's part of the reason. The other reason I do it is I want you to get in the habit of communicating well. Because if you know something and you can't communicate it, how valuable is that? It's not that much different than not knowing it. If you don't know things but you're good at communicating, your boss might think you know it just because you're good at tricking them. Okay? So it's important. So good habit is to communicate. Here's the good news. Most people suck at communicating. So if you suck less, you're you have an advantage. Does that make sense? Yes. If you suck less than they suck, who's better? Who sucks less? Who sucks less is better. So that's the other thing to focus on is good skills. So now I think next week I might have my camera ready to take pictures because, okay, freeze frame everybody. Don't change your body language. Now turn around and look at Kelvin. We'll turn around. What does his body language say? <laughs> I'm bored. Yeah. Or tired. Well, you kind of know this, you know. Huh? Kind of know this. Well, but I'm if you did, listening, Okay, but if see if you knew it, I think you'd be communicating. No. I was asking questions. No, I'm talking about your nonverbal. Your body language. 
Okay. Now, did you know this? Yeah. Okay, so you knew that. Mm -hmm. So you just decided you were going to wait till class started to go to the restroom? Oh, wait, when I have a mind. Okay. So these are the things. It's okay to make a mistake the first time. It's not good to make the same mistake again. You have to learn. Most learning is done from mistakes, not from doing it right. Okay, so that's an important thing now. And, um, okay, so I played college baseball. I played college level baseball. And when you get to college level baseball, that means you have lasted many, many years of your coach yelling at you. Okay? You can only get to that high level of sports is if you don't let it bother you. You learn to ignore it. Because when you get in the pros, what might be happening with 50,000 people watching? Oh, man. On the road. Right, yelling at yeah. you. Yeah. Throwing, throwing stuff at throwing you. Stuff at you. Yeah. What do you have to do? Ignore it. You have to ignore it. Even the cheering, right? Yeah. Well, you, you, you want the cheering to do something different. You yeah. want it to energize you, but not you don't want to be focused on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So usually no reaction is the best reaction when you're getting yelled at. Because a good coach, if he finds you have a weakness, a soft spot, a button that he pushes, if he thinks that you have talent, he's going to say, I've got to break this guy of this bad habit. Because if I don't break him, it's going to end his career. Okay? So your boss will say, whatever your bad habit is, the boss will say that. I might have talked to you about the Navy SEALs, I think I did, of what they tell you when you're a Navy SEAL and you're going through basic training, which is called BUDS. Did I do that? No. Does everybody know what a Navy SEAL is? Yeah. You know what a Navy SEAL is? Okay, so you know the Navy, right? Okay, so they are special forces, and they're the most highly trained Navy people and probably the most highly trained soldiers. And it's very hard to become one. And they have their basic training, which is called BUDS, Basic Underwater Demolition. BUD? Uh, BUD. BUD. Oh, BUD. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's called BUDS. And, um, and they physically push you to the limits. But mainly is mentally they work on you. So while you're going through BUDS, they're going to be saying the whole time, Kelvin, Quit now, you're never going to become a SEAL. You just don't have what it takes. Your mother would rather, have, wouldn't you rather be sitting with your mother or your girlfriend? Would you rather go out tomorrow night, Friday night, Thursday night? But mainly they're saying to you, you're not cut out to be a SEAL. You can't do it. And they don't mean it. They're, just saying it to, to they're trying to separate the good from the bad. So I know a guy that was a, a NBA basketball player named Ralph Sampson back in the 70s, one of the Twin Towers. And I said, hey, Ralph, when you got out of college and you went to the NBA, what was it like when you first went to camp? He said, the coach is constantly telling you, you're not cut out for the NBA. This is not college basketball. You are not tough enough for the NBA. And what do you have to do? No reaction is the best reaction. Oh. You don't want to start thinking, oh, huh, yeah, or listening to what if you start thinking, well, maybe he's right. He is the coach. Right? He's my coach. You have to take a, a thing of, I'm going to prove you wrong, or basically, I, didn't, I, I don't understand what you're saying. You're not speaking English. You're not, I can't hear you. You can't let that seed get planted. So good employees... Don't take things what? Personal. Personally, right. If you've ever seen any army movies where they have boot camp, the drill instructor is yelling and screaming at these guys the whole time. Does he hate them? No. No. What's he trying to do? Get them tough enough and get them prepared so that they don't what? Yeah. Die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay? Because that's usually what happens if you're a soldier and you fail. You die. Or other people die. 
Okay, so you can't take things personally. So again, here's a big secret. Um, good employees are prepared, they communicate, and they don't take things personally. What do most people do? Not prepared, don't communicate, and what? They do take things personally. Yeah. Boss says, wow, that sucks. Did you do that? That's really bad. That's really poor. Is that the best you can do? What do people generally do? Okay, but what do they actually generally do? What goes on in their brain? They get a search. Okay. They might say something back. What else? Okay, what causes them to get discouraged? The fact that your boss is telling you you can't. Okay, but what but what's going on in your brain? We don't say it. Regression? What regression? What's going on in your brain? What's going on? Loss of motivation. you you keep replaying that in your brain. Oh, okay. So he's right? Yeah, yeah. You keep replaying the conversation. God, the guy said, that son of a bitch. <laughs> right, right. You know? And you just keep replaying it, replaying it, replaying it. I should have said this. Yeah. The next time he does that, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Uh you know, when I'm supposed to do a project, I'm going to sabotage it. I mean, you know, we, think, we start spending time thinking about what? And what are we not thinking about? Uh, probably the Doing best. the things that good employees do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we just don't take offense to it. Well, if we don't take offense, we're going to focus on what we're supposed to do. If we do take offense, we're going to have this, we're going to keep pushing the replay button, the figurative replay button, replay replay, and we're going to think of alternate universe scenarios that we could have done or should have done or will do the next time. But while we're doing that, what's not going on in our brain? Replay? No, while we are replaying, what's not going on? No, we're not. Good stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. what are we, what's going through our brain? Bad stuff. Bad stuff. Yeah, okay. okay? This is what, this is not what good employees do. They do the opposite. So if you just start doing this, you're going to be better off than anyone else, even though you don't know anything. Yeah. You're going to be better off. Yeah. And well, you're going to be far, further ahead because um, that's a good point you brought up. I remember in sports, mm -hmm. a, a lot of times the coach yell at you because uh, they're preparing you because other players, when you play a game, will yell at you. Yeah. And there's some guys who didn't understand, who just didn't understand why the coach were yelling. Yeah, well, they don't they don't get it because if somebody doesn't tell you why they're doing it, you come up with your own reason. He doesn't like me. Yeah, That's mainly what people yeah. say. That coach doesn't like me. What do coaches who don't like people do? Well, what else might they do? They just ignore them. Yeah. I'm not going to waste time thinking about you. It's not worth putting energy into you. I'm not going to let you get me upset. I'm just not going to do it. Okay, so that means you want to become, you want to tell your brain, because again, your brain doesn't know what should I remember, what's good, what's bad. Whatever you tell it to do, it's going to do. If you tell it to do bad things, guess what it's going to do? How many cells do we have in our body? A lot. 600? Cells. Yeah, yeah, millions. There's no number, is there? Yeah. No, really? What the? Hundred trillion cells. Exactly one hundred. No, not exactly. I told you that. It's rounding. It's round. Well, a lot. Yeah. This is price. not in the spectrum of a lot. Okay. <laughs> a hundred trillion cells. How many of these cells know who you are? All of them. None of them. Hey, you're not prepared. No. Hey. This could be the president. I always have on in case President Obama calls. <laughs> But that wasn't him. Uh, yeah. So you have 100 trillion cells in your body, about. How many of them know who you are? Not all of them. None of them. None of them. Really? Yeah. They don't know. So you don't have any cells saying, oh, this is, me. this is Terrence. Here's what he wants me to do. They don't. <laughs> How many of them care who you are? Not all of None. Them. They don't care. They just do what they're, they're designed to do. My cells don't care. No. Your cells don't care. It's controlled by different parts of your brain. 
So when you throw a baseball, just to continue with the baseball thing, yeah. you learn as a little kid how to do it. Your muscles do it. Your muscles are made up of cells. They all learn how to do things in a certain order. So at, at a certain point, all your brain has to do is say, throw the ball. Yeah. Okay? At another point, you get to, like if you're a pro, your brain doesn't even say throw the ball. You just know by what's going on. That's what you need to do. So, um, so we have 100 trillion cells. They don't, none of them know who we are. None of them care who we are. It's controlled by our brain. Our brain doesn't know who we are. It doesn't care who we are. There's only a certain part of your brain called your conscience. Okay, that's the only part that cares. And it tries to affect other parts. But you have other parts. It's like you've seen that thing on this shoulder's the devil, and this shoulder's an angel. And they're arguing about what should he do. Okay, Do I want to eat this chocolate cake, or do I want to go to the gym? Okay, okay. Just a small part of your brain. But then, if you say, eat the chocolate cake, you don't say, OK, hand, reach for cake, grab cake, pick up cake. Move towards now. <laughs> it's all automatic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you're saying that our own bodies don't even care about us. I'm saying the cells. No. The cells. Does my ear care about me? No, your ear does not care. It cares about itself. The cells in your ear care about themselves. They try to live. They don't just die. Yeah. You know, you flick your ear. What does the cell not do? Who doesn't say that, Dan Terrence? Why does he keep flicking me? The next time he does that, I'm going to fight him. I'm going to tell my face to turn him. They don't, they don't do that. Okay. So what we have to do is we develop habits. We develop routines that become automatic. So becoming a good employee should be something that becomes automatic. And that is having certain habits. And we tell ourselves, these are the things I need to remember. Because otherwise, it gets into that 70% that you're going to forget. The last one is be the go-to guy. That's a good habit. So when your boss is thinking, when your boss says, OK, I need somebody to do something, you don't want to be the person that does this. Right. Okay. You want to be the person when he says, I need somebody You know, make yourself present to him. Because if you're the go-to guy and somebody's going to get rewarded, who's going to get rewarded? The go-to guy. Okay, Who doesn't get rewarded? Yeah, the guy who's really, so there's the spectrum, right? So everything fits into a bell curve. So you have some people who are the go-to guy, right? Some people. Some people are the, not me, right? Most people will do it if they kind of feel they have to do it. They're most people. Yeah, they're in the middle. So some people say no. Some people are the go-to guy. Most people say, well, it depends how I feel. You just always want to be the go-to guy. Because when good things happen, the guy who gets rewarded is the go-to guy. When people are going to be cut, who gets cut? The not me. The not me people. Okay. So those are the four uh, are four good habits. We'll keep adding more every week. But now every day, you should just go through your list. You know what I would do, what you need, what you should do. If I could force you to do it, I would. But I, I don't know how I could force you to do it would be at night, you put this by the side of your bed, and before you fall asleep, you just read your notes. You just flip through it really quickly. And you just say, okay, I know that, I know that, I know that, I know that. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. And then you're going to go to sleep. And um, then and it, when you say, I, this is what I need to know, read your book. This is the stuff I need to know. All right. So there was a guy, there was a thing called the Russian Revolution. 
Anybody study that in school? I've heard of that, but I don't remember. Okay, so it was at the beginning of the 20th century. So there was a czar who was the head of the Russian government, the king. It's called the czar, which a thousand years, two thousand years earlier was called what? The So what was before czar? Uh, basically the... Caesar. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. So the head of the Russian government is called the Tsar. Okay. Well, the communists wanted to get rid of him. And Tsar Nicholas. So there was a guy. Huh? Okay, so there was a guy named Rasputin, Grigory Rasputin. Have you heard of him? Grigory Rasputin, who was kind of a, he liked to say he was a holy man, a mystic, he could read people's minds and stuff like that. So one of the things he would do at night is if he wanted to have a question answered, if he wanted to know the answer to a question, he'd write it on a little piece of paper, He's in bed, writing on a little piece of paper. Oh, right right there. There. Writing on a piece of paper. He's laying in bed. He's about to go to sleep. He reads it and puts it under his pillow. And he would say that would get him to have an answer in the morning. The communists, the Bolsheviks, didn't like Rasputin, so they decided to kill him. So the first thing they did is they invited him over to the Tsar's house and they fed him poisoned biscuits or pastries. So enough to kill like an elephant. And um, so he ate them. Oh, you guys poisoned me. Boom. Goes down on the carpet. And they're kind of chuckling. All of a sudden he jumps up. Everybody gets scared because he then starts attacking them, right? So what do they do? They all pull out their guns and they start blasting Right? He goes down again. They kick him, make sure he's dead. They roll him up in the carpet, drag him out to the river, chop a hole in the ice, dump him in. In the spring, when the, when the ice had melted, they find the rug that he was rolled up in. And they find his body, and they do an autopsy, and they found out that he dropped, he died from drowning. Wow. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So not the poison, not the gunshot. No. <laughs> what? Yeah. So that's a, you know, go check out uh, Google. Google. Yeah. That. So, but again, you know, if we go back to our brain, it's hard. Your cells want to keep being alive. They want to keep doing what they do. And his mind was saying, you can't kill me. So every cell in his body was trying to counteract what they were doing to him. I'm not going to die. You can't kill me. You can shoot me. You know, I'm unconscious, whatever. But he had said, I am not, you're not going to kill me. And so obviously what happened is once they threw him in the, in the river, probably became conscious again. Woke up, where the heck am I? Oh man, it's cold in here and it's wet. I can't hold my breath. And so he ended up drowning. But so the, kind of the point is uh, there's a couple points. One is remembering. Our brain is going to not, not remember things unless we tell it it's important to remember. Because yeah. it's designed to flush out 70% of what we hear. The more you practice it, the more you're going to remember. We brought somebody in here from Stanford. Tomorrow we said, you know, said they took notes and they did their thing. Tomorrow we came in here and said, okay, what happened yesterday? Out of two hours, they'd probably have like an hour and 30 minutes worth of stuff that they could repeat back because they took good notes and their brain is used to remember. It's just like going to the gym. Okay, If you go to the gym for six months, if you go to the gym every day for six months, are you going to be in better shape than if you go once a week? 
Yeah. So we have to practice remembering. So the reason I give you this trip out by speaking is number one is we're going to forget things. Our brain doesn't care. So I'm going to remember what we tell it's important. So when he would do that little piece of paper thing, he would be saying to his brain, this is something I need to have an answer for in the morning. So while he's sleeping, what's his brain doing? Thinking about it. He's thinking about it on a non-conscious level because that's what's going on. We're not aware of most of the stuff that's going on. Yeah. There's like insomnia, where like half your brain is like sleep and the other side is high brain. And thus? And like your brain too, by itself? Your brain is always working, doing certain things. When you're dreaming, it's because your brain is working, right? Yeah. So like, you your ears how, still work. Yeah. That's what, you know how you, you go to sleep watching TV? Mm -hmm. and if the TV's loud, you start to dream what, what you're yeah. listening to? Okay, you can do that. Especially if you say, I want to do that. Most people say what? Lock it out. Yeah. I don't want to hear what's on TV. Okay, and that's what they you tune it out. Okay, so our brains are really good, powerful things. We don't know most of the stuff that we're doing. For example, when is the last time you told yourself to breathe? <laughs> like last night, because I had to take what? a deep breath. Okay. Other than Kelvin. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. Okay. We don't. Okay, when you're walking, when is the last time you said, okay, right leg, <laughs> okay, left leg? Okay, we don't. Okay, now, do you remember the first time you started driving? You were very conscious. Okay, hands here, feet, move foot to brake pedal. Where, where's the brake? Where's the gas? I got okay, right? Remember that? Did you drive? Okay. So remember the first time you got behind the wheel? You have to think about everything. One week later, what happens? You get used to it. Yeah, because you program your brain. You save your brain. It's important. I need to know how to drive. I need to remember this. And what does it do? It remembers. And it learns how to do it. And it just says, okay, speed up. And the cells in your body know exactly what that means. Okay, it doesn't say apply five pounds of pressure, six, seven, oops, too much. It doesn't do that. Yeah, okay? it becomes a... Okay, it doesn't, all, it becomes habit. Okay, and it becomes routine. So that's what we need to do. And so the other reason I talk about the Rasputin thing is because what our cells want to do is they want to keep doing what they're programmed to do. Okay, that's what they want to keep doing. So they couldn't kill, it was hard to kill Rasputin because he didn't want to die. There are other people, like you see in movies or you hear about, they die very easily. Okay, well, it's my time, I'm going to go. You know, you get old, you start expecting, okay, I'm going to die. Could be any day now. You know, people have a not good mental state that they're in because they're saying to their brain, okay, I don't really care. So the important thing is what you tell your brain to do, it will try to do it if it can. If your brain can do it, it can. If you say, I want to walk through that wall, because what are atoms, what is the wall made up of? Atoms, right? What are atoms mostly made up of? Empty space. Right? They're mostly made of empty space. So if my body is most is made up of what? Cells. Atoms. Atoms. Right? Water. And atoms are made up of mostly what? Empty space. Empty space. So theoretically, if I could align the empty space in my body oh, yes. with the empty space in that wall, what could I do? Walk through it. Right. But can I actually walk through it? Yes. No. You, might. you can't. You don't know? Try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't. You can't. Okay? <laughs> so our brain is going to do what we tell it to do if it can do it. Okay? But we know we can't fly. We know we can't walk through walls. So we're, it's not going to even really want to let us do that. Right. Okay. So now we've got 45 minutes left. We're going to talk about calendar. So fundamentally, what is the purpose of a calendar? So yeah, now in your table of contents, you should have a page Okay, so let's go back to our contents. Uh -oh. 
Oh, snap. Yeah, I did that too. Wow. Well, uh, good habits, like, That's all right. Okay, we'll just change it on your HOA page. Okay, so here's lesson learned. As soon as you put it on a contents page, anything on a contents page, you need to go to that page and you need to write the thing down. So like if you had HOA is on page, uh, or calendar is on page 11, you need to go to page 11 and write calendar. So that you don't write something else on that page and screw up your table of contents. Okay, so calendar. What is the fundamental purpose of a calendar? Stay organized. Okay, organized in what way? You know, or dates and stuff like that. They'll come to your okay. So, are we organizing stuff in a calendar? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Important things. What are we organizing? Dates, merits. Okay. What are the, what are those? Words. No. Birds. 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 Birds in a calendar we're organizing right. birds. When, okay. Okay. Let's move on. When you think well, about it. Okay. No, what do you mean birds? Not birds. Bird. Oh, wait. You said bird? bird? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So events. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. And events really bird. are things that make up time. Okay. So a calendar helps you organize time. Duh. We all know that, right? Calendar is about time. It's not about organizing stuff. Yeah. It's not where are my socks. It's what am I doing with my time. Yeah. Now, most people look at a calendar and they focus on forward, right? What in, what is going to happen in the future? Yeah. But. What does that mean? The things done. Things done. Ooh. Okay. That has to do with what? Past. The past. Yeah. Okay. So it's important now, at this point, to start thinking about your calendar in terms of past and future. You want to record in your calendar things that are already done. What is that? Because somebody might ask you, when did you do that? What would a good employee say? The exact date. They'd say, here's when I did it. What would a, a typical person say? Oh. I don't know. I don't remember. Are you putting that time thing in the calendar section of notes? Yeah, you should, you should put this drawing in there. That a calendar is about time, and time isn't just the future. It's not just what am I going to do. It's what did I do? It's about the past. Okay? So a calendar is about organizing time. Time is the only resource that only goes one way. You never get it back. If you don't use your time well, you are going to fall behind people who do. If you tell yourself, I want to be good at managing my time, what is your brain going to do? Help you be good at managing your time. If you say to your brain, I can't manage time, what's going to happen? It's going to say, it's not going to forget it. It's going to say, okay, I was just instructed to not manage time well. What is, it going to, what is your brain going to do if, if, if you say, I can't be on time? <laughs> yeah, it's going to say, okay, you don't want to be on time, I'll just make sure you're never on time. Because you just told me you don't want to be on time. And we get in the habit of making statements that are statements of fact, like I'm late, and turning it in, our brain turns it into an instruction, be late. Okay, so you need to stop all negative stuff because your brain doesn't know whether you're joking or what. It's going to take what you say and say, okay, that's what he wants to do. Because sometimes you're joking, but it's actually what? 
True, right? Sometimes people make a joke about things, but it's actually true. Yeah. So your brain is going to interpret what you say as what you need. Yeah. And it's going to do what you tell it to do. So, um, so you always want to say positive things. And there's something, if you guys learned in school, something called the growth mindset. Okay, so if you don't succeed at doing something, you don't say, I suck at this, I can't do it, it's too hard. You say, not yet. I just haven't gotten it yet. I haven't mastered this yet. Mm -hmm. That's called growth mindset, not yet. Yeah, that's definitely something I mean now. Like, I didn't think like that. And, uh -huh. You know, as a kid, you think if you're bad at something, you'll always be right. bad at it. Yeah. So... The school where, the middle school where I have a daughter go, I have a daughter goes to a middle school, they teach growth mindset there. And it's about not yet. So it's not that you fail at something, you just haven't mastered it yet. And if you have that in your brain, growth mind, mind has to do with where? Where's your mind? In your brain, right? Growth mindset means I'm always growing. I'm always learning stuff. I don't know it yet. I'm not stupid. I just haven't learned it yet. Okay? All right. Can I go in time? Huh? No. So if you were on that slide, I mean, don't write it down. That would go into general notes of importance if you wanted to write it down. So, time. So Google has an app that's called Calendar. And that's what we're going to focus on today, is the calendar app. Now, here's a couple things about the calendar app, is you have multiple, multiple calendars, not just one. We're used to having one calendar. So picture this. Picture a piece of glass, and you write on the glass, and you can see it. Okay. Now, picture another piece of glass that's in front of that glass. You can see through the glass, and you can see the other piece, right? Yeah. You can still see what's written. Yeah. Now, let's say you write on this piece of glass. So you can see on the back piece of glass anywhere that's not covered by the front piece, right? Now let's say you take another piece of glass, and you do the same thing. So you have all of these pieces of glass stacked up. And let's say there's little squares, and some of them are colored in on different ones. And you'll be able to tell which squares are covered, right? Like, let's say you have 10 pieces of glass, and they have squares on them. Some of the squares are covered, and some are not covered. And some are covered by two things. If you look at those, that glass, you'll be able to see it all the way through, right? right? And the ones that have no covering in them, you'll be able to see, right? You'll see right through it. And the ones that have one color in them, let's say it's red, if one of those colors you put red squares, you'll be able to see the red squares, right? And if other ones from another piece of glass had blue squares, you could see those, right? Okay. So you can see multiple, you can see through 10 different pieces of glass. That's what Google does on calendars. It's not one calendar with all of your things, it's multiple calendars. So we're going to have you create a um, school work, family. We're going to create three calendars. And so on your school calendar, what do you put? Stuff related to what? School. Oh, I see, I see. On your work calendar, what do you put? Stuff related to work. In your family calendar, you put stuff related to family. So that's one thing, is multiple calendars. The second thing is you can share calendars. You can share some or all calendars. So who would you share your family calendar with? People in your family. So if you're like me, you have kids, 
all of the kids get to see the family calendar. Who does dishes tonight? What, you know, whatever. Okay? You, everybody can see that calendar. But what calendar do they not get to see? Work and school. Yeah, they, why did I not? They don't need to see my work and school calendar. But I might want to see their school calendar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, might one of my daughters need to see the other daughter's school calendar? No. So with Google Calendar, you have multiple calendars, and you can share some or all of the calendars with different people. Who would you share your work calendar with? Your employees. Your boss or your co-workers, right? If it's your company, you share it. So what might, let's say you have multiple work calendars. What's one work calendar that you might have? Let's say birthdays. You put the birthday of every one of your employees on that calendar. Right? Yeah. So every day you look at the birthday calendar and you see who's got a birthday. You would have you can have a calendar that's holidays. And Google makes it so that you can turn on and turn off these calendars. So if you said, look, I want to see these two calendars, only these two calendars, that's all you see. So you see, here's all the holidays. Here's all the holidays, and here's all the birthdays. And I can see who has a birthday on a holiday, and who has birthdays when. So this is a very powerful thing, and it syncs with your smartphone. Yeah. Google syncs with Android. Yeah, when, when you did when we the invites last week, yeah. um, my phone, when I got the uh, invite for the workshop, not the workshop, the hangouts you did yeah. yesterday, it yeah. came up with my phone. Exactly. Even though we, we did it online. Yeah, so it syncs with that stuff. So um, first we're going to create calendars. So is everybody in, in uh, OK, do you have a Gmail account? OK, what is your Gmail account? Angel San, Santiago, S-A, A-N-T, Alvarez. Huh? Alvarez. Alvarez? Uh -huh. Yeah, and at gmail.com. Okay. Do you have a Gmail account? Uh, yeah, but I don't remember it like, right now. Okay, so do you know how to create one? Yeah. Okay, so why don't you create one and don't have a goofy name? <laughs> huh? Last game. Yeah, <laughs> don't have a goofy name on your Gmail. Okay, because I need to know these, and we need to know it, because you can't work on the calendar without a Gmail account. Okay, so I'm going to sit here, and you guys can follow along with me. Okay, so everybody should be at their calendar. Are you guys at the calendar? Yeah. No. Okay, so you see my calendar? What can you tell about my calendar just looking at it yeah, from where you are? Oh, wow. So there's different colors, right? Yeah. Every color is associated with a different calendar. So you see all the calendars I have? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take these out. I'm going to leave the weather calendar. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, so you have that up there, right? But I can't log in. Huh? I can't log in. Why? You're not doing it right. 
Are you putting a G instead of a Q? Because sometimes people get confused with a guest. Let's see. And that's a, 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 a O. Not a right. Okay. So Q A K O T A Y A. Okay. So now here's something to write in your book. This is the most. What is the most common computer error? Okay, so write in your book, everybody, just on the top of one of your pages. ID10T. This is the most common computer error. ID10T. Write it in your book. ID10T. Is that an O? Oh. Huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That is the most common computer error. Don't take it personally. <laughs> but when you get with a computer a network technician and you go and say, well, the internet doesn't work. Oh, man. That's funny. The computer will be, you know, whatever. He's going to say, oh, ID10T. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right, so, so here's the calendar. Okay, so now, uh, okay, Tashin, what you need to do is go to google.com. Okay, so I need to add. <laughs> Okay, while well, you guys are going there, tell me when you get to your calendar. Over there. Okay, you two guys are there, so we need yeah. Angel and Tashin to get there. Tashin needs to get to creating. Okay. Um, compose. Okay, so now you have to do it this way. Angel Santiago So I'm going to go to Calendar, no, Google Plus. So I'm going to add, how do I add Angel to my Google Plus? Oh, um, you would go to Angel. No, what do I do first? I go to People, right, in Google Plus. Oh, oh yeah, well, you got to go to Google Plus. Okay, I'm in Google Plus, then I go to where? People, right? People, and then Groups, right? Have in circle or my circles, circles, your circles. Your circles. And then you add to the circle that. Okay, so this would be in the SNVRHA. Okay, now I'm going to add Angel. All right. Okay, so Angel, what is your last name? Alvarez. Hmm? Alvarez. Okay. 
Okay. So you want to create an account if you can't remember yours. Okay. So create the account now. What if I can't enter to mine? Hmm. What if I can't? If you you can't get in your account, uh -huh. why not? Do you have a um? You don't have a cell phone. I do, but it's it's my it's my house. Okay, so. Hey, uh, Angel, yours has like a Naruto view or no? Oh, never mind. Oh, you lost it over the same Try that. <laughs> okay. Well, um, okay, so unfortunately, what we need you guys to do is be able to get into your Gmail account. You can't remember your number or what? You couldn't log in? Yeah, I can log in. No, like, okay, yeah. Let's go. What if I create a new one? Oh, we create, create a Go to sign in. That's what, that's what you can do to email. Oh, that's I got an email. Okay. Yeah, go to your calendar. Watch. Here. Sign in. Where is it? Sign in. Look at my calendar. And sign in there. Okay, now let's go to our calendar for no, everyone Kelvin's else. Not in a group either. Huh? Kelvin's not in a group. What do you mean he's not in a group? Like, it's not showing up on his Google Plus or his uh, email. Well. Like us here. Okay, but he didn't set it up. Remember, he couldn't get on a computer last week when we were doing this? You, so you do a yeah. On it, yeah. But we only have 20 minutes, so no. So what we're going to do, guys, you guys try to catch up. You guys follow along, or you follow along. We're going to do the Navy SEALs, learn one, do one, teach one. So we're going to go into calendar. You, you try to sign in. I don't know why you have that problem, because I don't have that problem. So we want to go to calendar, and we're going to create We're going to create three calendars. Okay, so here's what to write in your book. So you two guys write this in your book, and Kelvin, if you're not on your calendar, write this in your book. And again, this is going to be on this YouTube video that you guys can go watch at this point. So you over on the left, there's a thing that says My Calendars. So when you get to your calendar page, it's going to look like this. You have my calendars. Then there's a little down an arrow, right? You click on that, and it says what, Terrence? Create new calendar. Create new calendar. So you click on that, and then start at the top and work your way down. So calendar name, type in family. So you would type family, and then you hit tab. Description, and it's important to type something in. Don't say, I don't need to type it because I'm going to remember it. Because five years from now, you might not remember it. You want to get in the routine that you do the same thing every time. You don't want to say, well, do I need to do this one or not? Just do it. Just take an extra 30 seconds and put a description in. And you should put in who are the members of your family that you're going to include. Because five years from now, there could be more or less. Okay. And then location, so you would put Las Vegas, right? Calendar, uh, time zone, Pacific time. Now, you see down here, share this calendar with others. Yeah. So you click on that, share this calendar with it. With what is your say? Share only my free site information. What? Under share. Under under share. Share this with calendar with other people. Specific people? Yeah. Okay, so you click that, share with specific people. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I want to. Oh, you have, so you have two boxes. I only have one. Yeah, okay, so because I have a paid account. Share only my information. Over here. 
right? Okay, so then, but what we want to do is you want to add in the people you want to share it with. Okay, so the people in your family that you want to share this with, you type in their email address, and then you type in, or you click over here, and you give them the level they want. Make changes and manage, make changes, see all events, see only busy free. Okay? And then you would add all the people you want to add. Okay. So in order to create one, is there any person's name? Put someone's name in, yeah. Okay. okay. And then you click Create Calendar. Okay. Then let's create another calendar. How do we do that, Kelvin? How do we create a calendar? See, it hasn't even been 24 hours and you forgot. No, I mean, like, I was trying to open up the email that you gave me. I was in the recipe, sorry. Okay. Oh, you go to my calendar. Go to my calendars, right? Create new calendar. Create new calendar. You can call this calendar work. For you guys, this is work, right? Okay. So you create a work calendar. Who would you share this with? Our coworkers. Yeah. 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 So you would share it with each other. Yeah. And you share that. And so here on my calendar, these are people. Some of these are shared with other people. So the green. I'll just show you on the green here. The green is called LV Campus. Now, the other way to share a calendar is this. Next to the calendar is a drop down. Okay, I click on that, and one of the things that says share this calendar. See that? Right there? So on the calendar name, I clicked on the drop down, it came up. I'm going to go to share this calendar. This is all the people this calendar is shared with. All the students in the school. Okay. So you want to take your calendar and you want to share it with people. So you put it your over it and you click on the down arrow. Yeah. And one of the choices is share. Share this calendar. Okay. These are all the people I have this that green calendar shared with. Yeah, and you could adjust the color and all that stuff. You can, that. but that's a little bit trickier. We don't really want to do that. Yeah. Okay. So now that you have multiple calendars and you know how to share calendars, right? Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into labs. We're gonna configure our calendar for professional use. How do we get to settings? You click on the you, no, that's how you go to a different app. Settings is in here where the gear is. You click on the gear, and then you click on settings. And it comes up calendar settings. And below that, there's four different sections. We'll start with the general section. So it should be English, United States, Pacific, General, Calendar, Mobile, Labs. General, Calendars, and Labs. Okay. Um, so language, country, U.S., time zone, date format. So we want to keep it here, month, day, year. Time format. You don't want military time, so you leave it 1 p.m. Events from Gmail. Add automatically. Click that. Default events duration. So mine are set for 25 minutes. Week starts on. I have the week start on Monday. Should we change our Yeah. To 60, minus 60 minutes. Change it to 25. Yeah. So mine has a little box that says speedy meetings, encourage meetings, efficiency, and get to your next meeting on time, 30-minute meetings, and five minutes early, one-hour meetings, and 10 minutes early. Okay, date week starts on. What date is the, does it start on? I have my week start on Monday. Okay, change it to that to Monday. Then we go down work working hours. 
So put in, I put in 7.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. What time do you work here? 8 o'clock to 5. Okay, so put 8 to 5. Yeah, who is working hours there? See that one? You don't have one below week starts on? No, mine's Okay, event dimming, do you have that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, show weekends in week view, yes. Default view, change it to week. Okay. Custom view, five days. Location, so you can put in a city or your zip code. Okay. Show weather in Fahrenheit, show events you have declined. I put no, automatically add invitations to my calendar. Choose the middle one, yes, but don't send event notifications if I haven't responded yes, if I have responded yes or maybe. Alternate calendar, what's that mean? Well, if I click on it, that means there's uh, what does that mean? European or Middle Eastern calendars, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Chinese, Chinese, Persian calendar, Hebrew calendar. No, we just want U.S. calendar. Gentle notifications, play a sound, enable keyboard shortcuts, yes. Okay? So now you guys can go back and watch the YouTube video and do this while you're doing it. But what we're doing is we're setting the calendar up for professional use, not just amateur. Next, we want to go to labs, and this is the important changes, right? If you save changes, you have to then come back into settings. So go ahead and do that. And come back into settings. All right. Oh, I can't save All right. Okay. Labs is an important thing, so we're going to go through this. So, hide morning and night. Enable that. Gentle notification. Enable. Automatically declined event events. Enable. Who's my one-on-one -on -one with? Enable. Year view. Enable. So for you guys, it's so far it's mostly enabled. Background image, disable. This is a trap for people. So when you're a professional, you use your calendar for professional. If you go to work and you have a background image of your girlfriend or your boss walks up and he sees that, what does he think? You just don't really care about work. You're not the go-to guy. You're just a guy who's here for the money. So it's better to disable that. Okay. The best thing is if you enable it and you put a logo of the company on there. That's the best thing because then your boss walks up and he sees it and he says, what? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Free or busy, enable. So that's to see which of your friends are busy right now. Another one, jump to date, enable. Next meeting, enable. World clock, enable, and then hit save. So now you're going to have a much more complicated calendar. Over here on the right, you see this jump to date? Do you have that now? Yeah. Okay, what day of the week yeah. is September 16th, 2026 on? 2000. This one just says year. You should have jump to date. So if it doesn't do that, hit your F5 key and refresh. Okay, so maybe you didn't set it right in your thing. So you would go back to settings. 
But Kelvin, what day is September 26, 2026 on? 2026? Yeah. Oh, uh, September 16th is a Wednesday. Correct. Now what I want you to do is go up here to the top, right below where it says Wednesday, mm -hmm. click on the little box, click Edit Event, and write yourself a note. Anything? Something that 11 years from now, when you log on to your Gmail, you're going to see this note to yourself. So you might say something like, um, uh, I'm going to be told you all your goals. OK, so that's a good thing. And you then should say something like, right now, so that's the future, right? Yeah. Okay, now write something about the past. Right now, I'm sitting in the YOSA program. Oh, go to edit event to, to call it up here. Yeah, okay. I'm going, I'm sitting in the YOSA program learning about the calendar. And being and good habits. And then in the past, then you'd write something about the past. You know, yesterday sucked or whatever. You know, yesterday, blah, blah, whatever. Now, really good people have a habit of putting things in there for the future. So what you would want to do, so I'll save that. How do I get back to today, Kelvin? Oh, well, you press save first. Yeah. And then you click on the year? Nope. I mean, no? I go over here to where it says today. Oh, OK. And guess where I come back to? Today. Today. Okay, so now I'm at today. So one of the things that you want to do in terms of our map, past, present, and future, is start picking days in the future that you want things to happen by. And what is your brain going to do? It's going to try to make that happen. Okay? So um, if I pick something... You know, for this date here, October 21st, um, get ready, chow to. And I enter, I go to that date, and I would give myself something to work on. So one of the things you can do with the calendar is create tasks that you want to do things in the future. Like if you said, okay, well, every week I want to do something. I want to lose a pound a week. I want to run 10 seconds faster every week. I just sit here at my calendar, and I say, okay, uh, by September 23rd, oops, 2015, by this date, and you put it in on the top above any of the times. Okay, you put it in up there, unless you want to do it at a specific time. So I say run one mile in 6.26. Then I start having these things on my calendar. So when it comes to Monday, am I going to be able to see this on my calendar? Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll be able to see it on my calendar on Monday. Here it is down here. Okay, but I, it should have been up there. Okay, so now it's up there. Run one mile in and whatever. Got it? So a calendar can be used to help train our brain to do good things. Okay. Okay, so some of the things we wanted to get done today were sharing, learning how to share a calendar. We did that, right? Okay. 
about multiple calendars. Yeah. yeah. Labs. What yeah. was labs? We uh, went to the settings and then just the lab which world it was. Oh yeah, all our site pretty much. Yeah, well, so labs labs takes gene the calendar from amateur use to professional use. So we're tuning it up to be able to do more stuff than just the basic calendar that other people do. Um, okay, and so we created calendars, we shared, we have multiple calendars. What questions do you guys have? Yeah. Any questions that you guys have because you were able to keep up. So here's what we want to do for next week. We want to get in and start immediately getting on the computer. So do you have a computer at home? Yeah. Okay, so get your Gmail account. Uh, let's see. And you had a video on how to set up the Gmail already, right? Last week? Yeah. So if you go to SVN R S N V R H A. If you go to YouTube, S N R H A S N V R H A. Yosa. And hit search. It'll come up with the three videos. Oh, yeah, done yeah. one every week. And I think I'm subscribed to you. So good. Edward Bevel Block. Bevel. Devil Correct. Yes. Once again, you're back on track. Devil Correct. Or, told me. or you can say be evil. <laughs> be evil. <laughs> be evil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what other questions do we have? Do you guys have? Well, yeah, about the, the color thing you said. We, it's